Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> Welcome to Center of Light. <coughs> On the Sabbath day, or the Sabbath night, in all delight, Yanava, I come to you, full of power, imbued with the light. Welcome. All you sexy, beautiful human beings, first order of business as always is, I need some new candles. My candles are going dim. <laughs> Gotta keep the light burning, y'all. <laughs> uh, let's see who's here. First order of business. Joanne Kistler. Joanne, I have a meeting with you soon, darling. Phone, email, whatever. Rick Vito, ladies and gentlemen, the V is in the house. Patsy Dagum. Rod Bland. I saw Rod Bland the other day. What a drumming fool he is. Gisela Kruger. Dini. Rena. Thank you, Rena, for your love offering. I appreciate it. Angela. Terry Stringer. Dana Trotter all the way in some Hawaii. Maui. Wowie. Karen Cox. Hello, Karen. Uh, Karen, I will be mailing your gift to you soon. Hi, Kelly. Hello, Elwood. Elwood. Send me your email address again in my inbox. I have a gift for you, sir. Mary DeStefano, De DeStefano, I think that's right. John, Krista, Chris, Kim Gary, Kim Delini in here, y'all. Kim Bella Dini and Kim Delini. Are y'all related? Donna Hart, Sherilyn Healing Spirit, Brenda Marino, Tish Brockman. What's up, Tish? And Kristen Davis, who loves church. I love that she loves church. Dana says, Aloha. My sister Kathy is in the house. Kathy, I want to acknowledge you in saying that I really appreciate the blast into the past. The time capsule. My sister Kathy has been posting pictures of our childhood. Old South Louisiana, keeping things simple. No, Elwood, I would like your home address. I know it's in Chauvin, whatever. Send it to me in the inbox, sir. Hello, Gail Marcel. Kathy, thank you for sending all those beautiful pictures of our ancestry and us as children. It means a lot to me. And I'm glad the video worked out. I had the hardest time getting it together. What's up, Kirk Williams? Hello, everyone. Tonight we're talking about human being human, the human being. Instructions manual. I want to show you this image. This is pretty important. It's it's a play on words, yes, it's double entendre, yes. But there's a reason why I choose why I choose all the things I do. I would like you to please look at this image. Human instructions manual life would be a lot simpler wouldn't it if we all had an instructions manual well here it is it's my bestseller the divine principle anchoring heaven on earth it's the in inside of all of us manual let's see what kathy is saying Mom must have loved you and Cheryl. Lots of pics of you too. You know what, Kathy? Mom came to me in a dream experience and she said she favored Cheryl and I the most. <laughs> I'm teasing. So welcome, everyone. I would like to start off, as always, by announcing the event. i got to pay the bills. That's coming up September 21st and 22nd. September 21st and 22nd is... The Four Points Spiritual Expo in Memphis, Tennessee at the Agri Center. Hello, Lewis, my bro. $20 for two days, $15 per day. I'm going to... <laughs> Kathy says you are a liar. Kathy, you're just mad. <laughs> I'm going to be a keynote speaker. Larry Flaxman from the Discovery Channel on the show Ancient Aliens, keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise, she is no joke, keynote speaker. Lynette Marie, keynote speaker, pre preventative uh, health, holistic, really good. She's very, very popular. Somebody else is going to be a keynote speaker. Speakers all day long. Healing um, modalities, light therapy, sound therapy. There's going to be lots of people 
handling stones, minerals, all these really cool things like I have around my neck, which is an opalite, helps create balance. Kathy says, I don't get mad, I get even. Well, then now we're even because you were one up, one up on me. <laughs> Good to see you, Kathy. Thank you. And by the way, Kathy, I like your profile picture of you being a, a young girl. Very nice. Um, lots of vending booths. Spiritual readers everywhere. Best-selling authors everywhere. All these cool things that you would expect to see at a spiritual event. However, it's not about going there to be entertained and to buy a few things. Yes, be entertained and buy a few things. But we want you to take something away that is intrinsically of more value. What's up, Chris Leveron? You can find more about this powerful event by contacting me personally in my inbox. Leave information here. Or you can look up Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI on Facebook, Instagram, the Internet. Contact Victoria Smith. Chris Summerhill says, I missed the last session, brother. That's all good, buddy. Hope we're going to catch up in this session tonight. You want to know more about this event, let me know. It's going to be powerful. On Sunday, 6 p.m., I believe, there is going to be a speaker panel. I am on that panel. We're going to be talking about the future of spirituality in the Mid-South as well as the world. As all these beings, humans, they are, <laughs> in guise as spirit. We're going to be coming together. I will be re, not re, only recording this, but this will be a live event. I'm going to be recording and making this a live event two days. The two days, the 21st and 22nd of September. So if you can't come into Memphis, road trips are always fun. Come hang out with me the night before I play music. Come see me. Have a bunch of fun. Send me a shot of tequila because you can <laughs> wake up we have breakfast we go to the four points spiritual expo no joke things are changing the world is changing are you changing with the world or are you seeing and still living in the old paradigm it's okay there's nothing wrong with it are you expanding is the question it's a rhetorical question do you feel that your life is forever turning over or within itself Expanding to a greater possibility that you are. Here's your instructions manual. My human being. As I always say when I start my broadcast. Hello all of you beautiful sexy human beings. You are not a human being. You are a spiritual being first. Having a human experience. Right. Hello Mary Amalong. Lincoln Newman. People are coming in. Welcome. Please share this to you all. We want to transform as many people as quickly as possible. What does that mean? You're not broken. No one is broken. It's about getting you at least to the 50, one, at least close to 50% mark as possible so you can continue to step into the window of all that is good. That window is only going to stay open as long as it needs to, has to, will do. What I am saying to you is every 26,000 years in the cosmos, on the timeline we live in, to play out the karmic energy is happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. Take the momentum that many spiritual masters have laid down before us and use it to your benefit. Because reality is a vibration. Your reality is not mine. Mine is not yours. If it was, you would be me and I would be you or there would be only a need for one person. <laughs> Lincoln says, I love the bracelets, brother. Thank you. Ali Joseph, it's been a while. Well, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm doing what I think I can and should. 
It's greater than that. It's not enough. If you want to experience the bliss that many people in this time are experiencing. Before I go to, this is my quote, monologue. Here's my monologue. Before I go into a break till we get into the meat and potatoes, the meat and potatoes of this presentation, tonight is titled Human Instructions Manual. Let me show you this splash screen again. Human Instructions Manual. That was deliberately done. deliberately to carry another lesson see my teachings my works in fact my life and my love and my passion does not operate on a two-dimensional three-dimensional plane there is a reason why I put all these little inflections human in instruction man the da Vinci man manual on every possible level, it is my hope, my prayer, my life's work that not only I, but you get it. What is the it you want me to get? Yanava, Keith. The instructions menu, one of them looks like this. the book in the center the divine principle anchoring heaven on earth we know the prophecy of heaven on earth the divine principle god so we have to embody the divine principle to ever become heaven on earth individually and or collectively this is one of the first transmissions in 1996 i received from god when i was slammed into an absolute divine experience this is one of the first things that i received Tonight's presentation, Human Instructions Manual. Spirit is speaking. Make no mistake about who you are, my beloved children. Wow. It is no accident that you are hearing words of this testament. Now that you are, I encourage you to take full advantage of it. For within its pages, you will find everything you need to understand your true self in your relationship to the spirit you call by many names. The words my scribe has written herein are to prepare you for the change that is already underway. This was 1996. The train is leaving the station, y'all. Consider this work an instruction manual for your return to God. Those of you who choose to live by the ideals and principles I present herein will awaken from your bad dream of separation and shift into the higher reality that will enable you to consciously reunite with me, God. So I implore you to not only hear these words with your ears, but with your heart. For doing so will open you even more to receiving my intent and my energy. All that I am, Spirit continues. I have miracles for all of you. Seek them with sincere intention, and I shall grant you the awareness that will cause them to appear. Fortunate are you to be the forerunners and to hear about the divine changes soon to come. Blessed are you to receive the divine principles, which I will give you the actual nine divine principles in a little bit. Blessed are you to receive the divine principles that will empower you. Privileged are you to learn about the return of Master Jesus and other masters of my most holy light. Wow. This stuff hits me hard. As if I'm reading it or hearing it and experiencing it for the first time. Hello, Pri. My brother Lincoln says, Be love and light. Search for the origins of your soul. He says, 
take off your seat belt and let's go <laughs> everyone I did not announce let me see anybody in this list got everyone again Kathy thank you for hanging out with your brother I want to share something with you before I go into this pause before we come back into the thick of this presentation I don't want your sympathy I don't want oh my god I can't believe it. I don't want any of that there is a point two weeks ago yesterday I was in a very intense car accident I'm here unscathed a few days ago I get an inbox from someone from India I don't know this person by the name of Rajesh he said listen to this <laughs> he said I asked my guru about your car accident and what that was all about basically I'm paraphrasing his guru by the name of listen to me very carefully By the name of Shankar Maharaj, this is what he looks like. This is soon to be fully illumined, God-realized man. By the name of Shankar Maharaj, is in a, is, lives in India. But somewhere in India, he's in a cave in a state of samadhi. For those who don't know what samadhi is, he's, in a, he's deep in meditation within himself. And he ain't coming out. Ever. Until he fully merges with the, the divine consciousness, God. Jesus, Buddha, same principle all across the board. The same divine principle that lives in everyone right here, right now, always has and will forever. It is you at your authentic self. It's even beyond your soul. Your soul is not the it of it all. Your soul is where you connect. But there is a place beyond your soul where you no longer have a body. You're no longer corporal. What you're seeing as you look at this presentation of, with me is my soul. When I'm in the spirit fully, this doesn't exist. This man I just showed you is in a state of samadhi. He's communing with God so much so he's going to physically link up. This person who sent me this inbox message, Rajesh, said, I asked my guru, who he's in telepathic communication with, about your accident, Keith. He said that Keith is a blessed soul. Thank you. I'll take that one. I'm going to brag on my hard work that I've been doing for a long time. But that a year ago, you know, if you ever seen my work, you will know I don't believe in curses, hexes. I still don't. In context, someone placed a curse to me and they told me they did. I'm done with your nonsense. But there are places within ourselves that we are truly not illumined or aware. And people of the wrong spiritual energy, they thrive on that shit. It's their food. And they can't sneak in when we're not aware. Obviously, in some part of myself, I was not aware. And that's okay. There's aspects of all of us that we're just not aware that a year ago when I did one of my presentations, I said something or did something, had a presentation that was anti-darkness. And a team of a husband and wife heard the presentation. And they went to work on Keith Anthony Blanchard. As soon as Shankar Maharaj was asked this question from his disciple, Rajesh, 
what happened with my friend Keith. He said, I immediately surrounded him with light protection. Tell him to carry on with his work. This kind of stuff fascinates me. When I was in that car spinning, barrel rolling three times in the air, I felt the hand of God. You may say, well, Keith, this avatar or soon to be found out after the fact. I hear you. So how could be he be part of the hand that you felt? He doesn't live in time. Now let me share with you before I go to this commercial break what and who and how this being is and what it's related to. This divine man in a state of samadhi like Buddha declared under the Bodhi tree, I am not leaving this spot until I become realized. Jesus went into the desert for 40 days. Same idea. This individual is part of the Datta, that's D-A-T-T-A, -T -T Lord Datta lineage. Listen to me. Jesus is Lord, rather, more correctly, Christ is Lord. Um, what's the name of the, the Maitreya, who is the overseer, the oversoul of all these lords? This divine man is part of the Datta lordship. Swanji is Lord Datta itself. So, Shankar Maharaj is next in the lineage of Sri 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 Viswa Yogi Viswanji Maharaj. These men are aspects of the highest consciousness that has ever visited a planet. Hence, at the beginning of this presentation, I said, fortunate are you to be the forerunners in this time of human expansion and to be privileged for the return of the Master Christ as well as other divine masters. Now we understand each other. And the arena that at being human we are playing in. This is not just some presentation you see on Facebook. I'm blessed to have everyone plug into the spiritual way of things. I know my lineage. I know my work. I know I, uh, why I came. I had an interview with Nick Pereira the other night. Nakulas, Nakulas Das. And something inside of me has awakened. And I've been holding back. Why I've been holding back, I don't know some level it's probably a fear definitely not what people think of me that's obvious don't know what it is but i'm open to explore whatever it may be so that whatever my holding on to i release my grip and step upon that very ship in a full conscious way that i've been telling you about the good ship lollipop stick around i'm going to be right back with a powerful presentation that I have no idea what it's about. Stick around. Set 
Flagship Mother Earth, human beings, welcome to Center of Light tonight. I got to get my placement. I got to fall in. I like my brother Lincoln's expression. He said, let go. I'm going to let go. Hello, Doug McMinn, drumming fool, Enos Thibodeau. Hello, Kelly McQuage, Melissa McElroy. So my energy is beginning to spin in this moment, it's it's been happening since my world began to spin in that car accident. Talk about wake-up call. Perspective is everything. Even though 
I explained to you what I explained to you, how someone was trying to sabotage me. This is not, I'm not playing victim. I am not playing victim. I'm playing factual. Someone was trying to sabotage me. Whatever word, whatever way, my work, my life, whatever. Understanding the beauty of what they gave me. Believe it or not, in that darkness, they gave me a great gift. You may say, oh my God, that is, how is that? It gave me perspective. And I wouldn't change it for anything. And because of, I've changed it by my will and seeing it for what it is. I'm not a victim. Oh my God, somebody tried to sabotage me and this guy hit me in the car wreck and all that. That's, that's victimization. What I chose to do was, this fucking sucked. I got bruised ribs. My friend has a broken arm. I'm human. Tonight's presentation is human. The instructions manual, which is one of them, my bestseller, The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven and Earth. How to be fully human. How to be fully divine at the same time. Is it possible? And I'm telling you, yes, because I am doing it. Many of people out here are doing it. Whether you're doing it or not, I'm speaking to me. I'm looking at this monitor right now who has this sexy guy's face on it so I can see where I'm looking in the camera and I'm talking to myself. Every day I talk to myself. I want the golden ring and it's right there. It's fucking right there. So my energy is beaming from perspective. One of the m most recent presentations I've done since this whole experience and my interview with Nakulus Das, spiritual teacher, he is my God. Believe it or not, I need a cigarette. Oh my God, spiritual teacher smoking a cigarette. Watch me. The energy is spinning for me. I don't want you to see this as look at Keith telling about himself. I want you to see Keith telling about himself. I want you to understand that this is something you can have for yourself if you don't have it already. And if you have it already, God dang it, good for you. Turn up the fire. Feel me? Do you feel me? So if I am the teacher or a teacher and the example, then watch. See what it does to me. If anything, that all you need to glean is just see what it does to me. Why for many years, as a seeker, it's all I've ever wanted. And it's happening in such a way I can't keep it inside. Like a burst of light it wants to explode out of my being, out of my human being. It's almost as if I can't contain it. And I don't know how to contain it or, or not to contain it. It's running amok and it's going to do what it wants to do. And some part of me may be frightened. I don't want to say fearful or afraid or scared. It's just kind of like this. I'm just not sure. <laughs> the lights are off and I'm going down a stairway. And I know that after five stairs, it's the same distance and step. It don't have to be illuminated. It's just dark. I know the distance between the stairs. But I remember on this one staircase, there was this broken piece of wood. And I wasn't sure if it was the sixth, seventh, or eighth step. So I'm taking that step a little more cautiously than the ones before or the ones after I cross the threshold and say, now I'm on safe ground. Do you understand? Of course you do. That's why you're here. Instructions menu in instruction. Construction, construction. We want, we want to construct something of value. But the only way we can be the difference in the world to construct something of value is to go in instruction, that which is of structure. I'm channeling this. This is just happening to me. 
special you because you understand as well as I could speak. Human. You're playing in a human arena, but you're not human. In fact, you are human. Because human, the word hue is of the Ekankar religion, which means God, hue. 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 Pause. Feel. Experience. The bliss of your divine parent. Hue. Man is of the earth. So when you put hue man together, you are the living testimony. Dear Lord, listen to me. You are the living testimony. You are heaven on earth. Heaven comes down, earth goes across. Your master teaches. Your master teacher, Jesus, was trying to tell you something but beyond literature. Are you able to see? I am vulnerable. Do with me as you will. So he declared, and so do I. Do you? Becomes the question. Are you willing to let go? Yo. Hello, everyone. John Talbert. Uh, Rick Vito says, I have learned more in my life from pain than... Pfft, yes, sir. I am sitting in this chair doing this dance because of what we call pain. I call it like you would, Rick, a blessing. Lincoln says, smoke up, Johnny. John Talbert. Pri says, as, as that last song, as that last song said... Reveal to me the beauty of your soul. That indeed is what I witness every time I join you, Keith. Oh my God. And with that, you reveal our beauty within our soul's gratitude. Well, blessings, dear. Thank you for the spiritual massage. That belongs to you. Hi, Nori Love. <laughs> Sana says, hello, Sana. She says, spark it up. Nori loves in the house, y'all. Um, just looking at Joanna. Joanne Kiss Kissler says, "Just keep, just keep being who you have discovered your soul is. Keep peeling away the layers. You've got this." Now we understand the capacity of ourselves. You should by now. <laughs> Understand the capacity of you. What in, lies inside of you is forever. That place. This sounds like things you talk about all the time. No, 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 no. It, Dana, blessings to you. Aloha. Hello, Irene Grillo. This may seem like it's the same words I talk about often. Stick around long enough and you will see that my dynamic is changing. The words are only the colors on the palette. All artists, painters use the same colors, but it's the change you're going to feel the difference between them. I'm going to begin to push. I don't even know why I'm saying this. I don't even know how I'm saying this. I am, the I am is going to begin to push. It's going to challenge you. Don't be pissed off. Be grateful that you have the capacity and the awareness to understand that if spirit is being pushy, then it serves its purpose. Pushing meaning not invasive. You are here in this form. So and on some level, you have opened up to say, I am open to receive the information that is of my greater good. Welcome to the other side. Allow yourself to be pushed. Gracefully, you will fall. Hello, Irene. I want to say hi and give a love Facebook poke to Irene. Hello, dear. Let me go see if we're friends, Irene. Somebody keeps putting angry faces. It doesn't upset me because I would be the angry face myself. 
and I'm sure it could be an accident because you're using thumbs on a phone. But if, no, honest, and I mean this honestly, it's not about a debate or an argument. Your heart, your mind is welcome here. If you have anything you ever want to bring forth that goes against my teachings or goes along with you, whatever you like, this is your platform. Your platform. I think it's a mistake because that's easy. <laughs> so if, if you're here and you have any issue with my teachings, it's okay. It's okay. I don't want to call you out and bust your balls. I want to acknowledge you. Call Laparus in the house. Jody. Hi, Jody. Irene says, thank you so much. Irene, you can thank me by Facebook and friend requesting me. I know you're a follower, but I want to get to know you. See, that's how I roll. Lincoln says, bring it, brother. Nothing but love for you. Back at you, my bro. Karen's in the house doing anything. Karen, 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 Karen. I have been loving what you are doing with yourself. You never really told me. But I'm acknowledging you, meaning your posts reflect where you are in your consciousness. At least it does to me. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Krista Huggins, somebody else just showed up. Let's see who's here. And then we're going to move on to some videos. My dear Lord, as Medea would say, Lincoln, Mary, Kim, Carl Laparu. Carl Laparus, if you are in the Shreveport, Bossier City area, my brother, musician from years ago, beautiful man, always has been, has a venue club called The Three Dons. Check him out, The Three Dons. Carl, as you plug for the day. Kelly, Rick, Elwood, Lewis. What's up, Lewis, bro? I get the feeling somehow in the future, Lewis and I are going to meet. I don't know why. I just divulge it. Chris Summerhill, Karen Cox, Ames Archer. What's up, Ames? Mary DeStefano, Sana, Rena, Pri, Krista, and Nori Love. Rick Vito says, you and Keith should get married. Just saying. <laughs> uh, just curious to know who you're implying, Rick. Let me know who that is. Not that I'm going to judge. I'm just curious to know what you got going on in your... Human skull. Let's get down to the presentations. Tonight's presentation is human instructions man you will. My book, The Divine Principle, is such a one. How to be a full fledged human being, not that you are broken. More so, how to move into the contract that you came here to fulfill. Maybe while you're hearing this echo of your contract through me, Yanava, through the lineage of Lord Data. But you got to want it. And the first on the video presentations for tonight, I love this Christed soul. You will too, if you don't know of Muji. Muji. Being human. Listen. Listen with all of you being, not just with your ears. Take it in. You will change your life. Even to be, I am. Just as you are here. Leave your mind, let your mind go for a walk or a stay, what doesn't matter. Hmm? What takes no effort? What takes no time? Hmm? What takes no effort? What takes no time? Go to that place in you. Is there any place in you that is not trying to be? It is not pretending anything at all. It does not have to practice anything at all. The mind has a lot to say about that. Oh, it is just some psychological practice, some little exercise. No. Forget about it. What takes no effort in you? 
go there. Just only bring your attention to it. That will take a little effort, if you want. Your mind is trying to get there first. Okay? Your mind is trying to get there first. So when you turn your attention, the mind goes, Hello, I'm here. No effort. Look, no effort. Look, look, no effort. Hmm? And you know him. You say, No, it's not even that. Not even that. If I point you to what is no effort, something wants to make an effort to be no effort. Are you aware? Even to say, we are so habituated to effort, that if I say, be in this place which is no effort, something goes to try and be no effort, to do no efforting. So that you must see and say, it's not that actually. You don't need imagination also. Why am I saying this? Because your true self requires no effort. It takes a lot of effort to be a person. It takes no effort to be yourself. You must know this. It takes a lot of effort. It's only because you are so used to it that it feels natural now. It takes memory to keep remembering how you were and how you, you, how you are. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of psychological effort, and physical effort. This is why when we are amongst people, after you leave you feel drained and tired. Why? Because you are efforting. You are efforting to keep looking worthy, to keep looking important, to keep looking interesting, to keep looking knowledgeable, to keep looking desirable. You see? So when everybody, when you go home, wow, oh my God. When is my next appointment with life? Oh God, I can't, it's too much. Hmm? And therefore some people when they get up in the morning, they see the sun, they go, oh no, not another day, I don't want to, I don't want to effort anymore. So here I'm telling you, what is no effort? At least uh, notice this in you. You give attention to everything else which requires effort. Give a little attention to that which requires no effort. <coughs> and then you are coming into the realm of isness, of beingness. It simply is. When your attention recognizes and is one with your isness, all your life flowers. All your life blooms, becomes radiant. And you can start proving it from now. Welcome back to Center of Light, all my Yanavites. I want to acknowledge a dear brother, never met this beautiful man, <clears throat> Rajesh Patil. He may say, Keith, I don't want the glory. I want to say thank you, sir. When I told you someone gave me a message recently about this divine man who was in a state of samadhi, put a shield of light around me because of this accident. This is very important to me, and he did show up tonight. How you like that? Synchronicity. Bless it. He is part, of, as far as I know, I did some research, on the lineage of Lord Data. as well as Swamji Viswayogi, Sri Sri Sri, Viswamji Viswayogi Viswamji Maharaj,
yet again has stepped into my life. Tonight's presentation is human instructions manual. You just heard who they call, they call him Baba, they call him Father Energy. I think he's Polynesian. Beautiful man he is. He talked about isness. We call ourselves human beings, but what does that really mean to be human? Hugh, Ekankar religion, God, man of the earth, heaven on earth prophecy. We have to become the it in order for the world and the prophecy to be fulfilled with that divine, glorious, gracious light. So Muji, Muji mentioned the isness. That should be our human business. The time is now. The train is very well on its way out of the station. Are you ready for your integration, initiation, graduation, into the greatest possibility, not of who you could be, listen to me very carefully, but who you are. This sounds like words. I am living testimony. Many of us are becoming the living testimony of the truth. You're not going to unfold into your divine nature. It may take a linear timeline until you choose to do that. Dear Lord, I right now in this moment, I'm choosing it. So I won't be coming in the future, though it still may take a gradation of time. Like Lord Shankar Maharaj, he's in a state of samadhi, merging with the divine. And he's not coming out. He has no intentions of ever coming out until he's done with his human business in the isness. That's the journey for any spiritual seeker. Before I get into the Sadhguru videos, delicious man he is, what Shankar Maharaj is doing, what Swamji has already done, you, I, what is transpiring for any spiritual seeker. I don't care if you're a Christian, a Muslim, Islam, Sikhism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhist, this is the gig. This is the gig. There is no other gig. It's about being radically transformed. Though it may take what we call time, which is non-existent, if God is love, awareness, peace, bliss, ecstasy, abundance, all those qualities, but let's just say if God is love, then it's about developing the love within to the level God is. Let me read that again. This is very, very delicious, powerful information that you ha may have never received. Meaning because it transcends the boundaries of gender, sex, preference, country, religion, talk, walk. If you want God in your life right now versus when you die, if you think that you're lucky because you've been good, here's your ticket to salvation right now. Radical transformation. If God is love, then it's about developing the love within you to the level that God is. That is what you call a delicious spiritual Nugget. <laughs> so are you saying, Keith, that is exactly what I am saying? When you jump off of the cliff of your egoistic, what is ego? Let me clarify what ego is. Ego is not that this person is full of ego and they're arrogant and they got this pompous, I'm just this handsome or beautiful person attitude. That is ego, but that is not the true definition of ego. Ego is what a person thinks about themselves and how they think the world views them. That's what ego is. How I think about me, the monkey in the head, versus the God in the heart, the love. Right? Right? 
So when you jump off the egoic cliff into with the intentions of living forever, being in forever, being in the grace of the Spirit, not Sunday at church at 9 o'clock, that last to 11. And then you go home, synagogue, mosque, and then you go home and do your shenanigans all over again. It's okay to be human. I do it as well. I am and can be a hypocrite in that regard. But diligently, come Monday through Friday, I'm striving. I have no excuses for my backsliding. In fact, I quite enjoy it. Why? <laughs> because I'm human. And I live in my instructions manual. I live inwardly enough to sustain me divinely. But to still play in the manual experience. I do everything I can every day, all day, to live in a form of structure, instructions manual. I live inwardly that gives me structure. Are you living in structure? If you are, God dang it, God bless you. I'm happy for you. Sadhguru, after these quick comments to those who are chiming in. Joel Flores, Steve Kopp. Cecil McDaniel. Kim Gary says, isness is necessary. <laughs> What's up, Lewis? Rajesh, everybody's just commenting, get, sending me a love. I'm getting inboxes. I'm so popular, y'all. Look at me. Cecil McDaniel, I, I thought about you today, sir. I, I, I'm going to contact you tomorrow. If you think about me, which you should be thinking about me, Contact me tomorrow, sir. I'd love to catch up with you. Rick Vito says, focus more on your inside instead of focusing on everybody's outside is the way I look at it. It starts inside, not outside. Merry Christmas. Let's get down to some Sadhguru videos. Tonight's presentation is human. In, in, instructions, instruction, structure, manual, instructions, manual. I'm going to start pushing. I am going to start pushing. It may upset you. Good. I hope it upsets you out of your fucking box. Because my box, my world has recently been upset, torn asunder, turned upside down. Three ups and the same freaking things I just conveyed. I'm ready to go inward where everything is up, metaphorically. Heaven. Sadhguru. More about being human. Instructions manual. Please, you can now. Let me rephrase that. You do. You can choose not to take this title and this video out of context. That's up to you. But you can also choose to hear it in the beauty that it is as kim said the isness this is how much you are worth and this is why you have been born on this earth human instructions manual live it fully become a full-fledged human being to pursue you will not and cannot people want fulfillment well it takes a lifetime of effort for most human beings that things that they pursue will not and cannot bring fulfillment. Moving to a place where you can handle any kind of challenge simply means it's giving you the freedom to do what you want. Because there is no the God, there is no incarnation. Avatar means a repeat performance.
for the same aspiration of human fulfillment. There are so many efforts, so many different types of activity in the world. Whether one is going to the temple or to the bar, seeking God or drink or drug, one is seeking peace or war, one is seeking trinkets of life, another wants to go to heaven. Essentially, the pursuit is same. People want fulfillment. Well, it takes a lifetime of effort for most human beings. That things that they pursue will not and cannot bring fulfillment. Samyama is not an effort to fulfill yourself, but to remove the ingredients which cause unfulfilled condition within you. There is a process in your hands right now. Where you will take this process is in your hands, but it is such a potent and alive process, a very live and potent process that if you give yourself to it, it does things that you've not imagined possible ever. About spiritual process being fragile, if you ask me, Your spiritual process is more often challenged here in the ashram than in some other city. It is challenged and it's also supported, that's important. You simply challenge, people may feel defeated. It must be constantly challenged and it must be also supported and nursed. Both are needed. As I said, some nursing is also needed, some challenge is also needed, both are needed. There's no challenge, just nursing, you will grow up very weak. Only challenge, no nursing, you may break. It's a balance. Is there a perfect balance? There's no perfect balance, everybody balances somehow. So, uh, where you feel most uncomfortable, you stay there. That'll be good for you. That is if you want to grow quickly. If you want to grow slowly, be where it's most comfortable. It's taken a lot of effort to constantly design every situation like that, that there is nourishment and there is challenge, there is nourishment and challenge from being a Isha's Anga to become Isha. That means wherever you go, it's the same thing. Doesn't matter, you're in the middle of a marketplace, you're like this only. You can participate in everything but untouched by anything. So this is a simple test for yourself. If you miss anything, not just people, anything. Right now, uh, anything that we are used to, food, comfort, this or that, we thoroughly enjoy it. But when it's not there, we don't miss it. When you don't have it, if you're in the same condition as when you have it, this is a good indication, that means you are moving from a nursery to
face any kind of challenge. Moving to a place where you can handle any kind of challenge simply means it's giving you the freedom to do what you want. Whatever we want, we can take it up and do it. evolved beyond what we thought was a normal human being as a deva, that means he's like godlike. Because I think I've spoken about this, you know, people call Tendulkar a cricketing god. Everybody want to come and fall at your feet and things is because when they see somebody that is evolved beyond what they think is normal, what they think is normal, then that person, they are saying, he is divinely endowed, something more than what we have. There is no the God, because there is no the God, there is no incarnation. Avatar means a repeat performance. <laughs> yes, avatar means he's come once again. In, in a certain form. But does not mean the God has come. If somebody is of a certain kind, they say, oh, he is Shiva's incarnation. You must understand this. In this culture, for example, they were talking about Ramana Maharshi. People used to refer to him as Bhagwan. Bhagwan generally, literally translates to like almost like God. This, uh, yes, Sanskrit, somebody, tell me what's Bhagwan, how does it break into two words? Huh? A fortunate being, that's what they're trying to say, okay. But generally, these are the words that are there to describe God. Tamil, Lena? Sada means going inwards Oh, that's nice. I didn't realize that, I thought kadwala kadwala and falling. If that is the meaning, it's fantastic that they're calling, using a word for God as something that is within. The dictionary it has been said like that, one who had overcome the self or the existence. If that is a dictionary meaning, it's a wonderful, absolutely fantastic meaning. Always they're referring to God as one who's transcended his own self. Fantastic. So, so these are the kind of the words that are there. There is no the God anywhere in these languages. Being human, no joke, I did not construct this with any intention. Did you notice what Master, let me show you this, this is important. Did you notice what Master, ah, oh, my picture's not there, either way. What Master Muji said and Sadhguru said, being human fully requires no effort. I didn't find these two videos thinking that, oh, they both said no effort. Let me just plop them on my screen. That's not what happened. So tonight's presentation, Human Instructions Manual, is about no effort. That's the new uh, subtitle. Human Instructions Manual. No effort. No effort. Like Lincoln said. See, Lincoln is on the path. Kim is on the path. We're all on the path, but I'm acknowledging those, and if I don't acknowledge you, you are included. Rick's on the path. Wisdom, 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 he, he announced. The path is just being in the energy and the want of it daily. 
of love because there is only one path. The question simply becomes, if God is love, then it's about developing the love within you to the level of that God is. So the question simply becomes, how much, to whatever degree, are you living that? So much so that it becomes default. It becomes your new habit. That when you use the bathroom, it's sacred. Using the bathroom, you choose to make it sacred as a functionality of releasing your body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotions of bodily excrementy, uh, ex uh, excremental waste. When you get a taste, no pun intended, of that reality, then you understand, or you're moving at least into closing the final pages in your instruction manual. No effort. Like Lincoln said, Keith, let it out. And I'm working on it. And thank you, bro, for, for being a sounding board and support. And I want to let it out. Well, I don't know how. I don't know what the is that wants to come out. I know it's pushing. And I'm working on allowing it to unfold. As Muji said, it's like a flower. If you look at center of light at the top of the screen, right about, everything's backwards, so bear with me. Here, that flower, it's a lotus flower. It's an unfolding. Coming out of what we think is human, the murky, dirty, negative pond full of scum and stank and unfolding into being a full-fledged human being. Hugh, God, man, earth. Human beings. Heaven on earth. Prophecy. This is prophetic. It's happening now. This is no joke. This platform of Center of Light is yours. I love what I do, and I show off and have a good time. My heart is invested eternally. I'm going there. How about some more Sadguru? And then we will close with Yanava. Ya, heart, God, will, na. I choose to use my mind versus it using me. Reason, discernment, using your intellect correctly. And va, the backbone, taking action of willing forth, using your mind to be clear, to make right choices, and put it into action, yanava. Sadhguru, we're going to be right back. Close off this presentation. Thank you. Share this to your wall. In this room, there's a few links to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Donate link. I do this pro bono. Because I love you. I love me. I love the work I do. The play I do. Come play with me in my sandbox. Divine children. Children of light. You feel me? Sadhguru. How to become a full-fledged human being. Tonight's presentation. Human. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate you. Tonight's presentation. Human. Instructions. Man, you will. Subtitle just created recently. No effort. Be yourself. Fully. Don't give a shit what people think. If you do, you are still leaving an ego. You think you're protecting those you care about by caring about what they think? You're not. Not only are you injuring, injuring yourself, you're restraining yourself from the beauty that could assist everyone around you and to become into becoming a full-fledged human being, Sadhguru. Hold on tight. Claim your birthright, that which belongs to you. You need to understand life as you know it. What you right now call as me is life. Maybe right now you are referring to just your personality which is essentially 
a bundle of thoughts, emotions, opinions, ideas and prejudices. Of course, I'm missing out the important thing. Leaving that part of your personality, if you just refer to this as me, essentially you are referring to this life. This life process is me. This life process has not grown, please see. It is the same life process. If you do not remember the womb, at least you remember when you are five, six, seven, eight years of age. When the body was that small, it was the same life process. Now it is the same life process. It will be the same unless, unless you become free from the five elements and then it bursts open into a different possibility. This whole terminology of spiritual growth is a false terminology because there is no such thing as spiritual growth. Either you explode into another state or you don't. No, many times I did explode but again I am the same. That's because You know, during the Diwali time, if you try to light the crackers, there are some crackers, you light them <laughs> You thought they're going to go boom, but they do <laughs> You light them again <laughs> Then you have to really poke some, just a, a small little you know, the, the incense stick that you're using is not enough, you really have to put something bigger fire inside, then they go boom. But then you have to be careful because they're going to explode too quick in your face. So your experiences of those moments when you almost exploded is like that. I almost became boundless. I want you to experiment this almost. I almost had my dinner. I almost went to the toilet. I almost had my breakfast. Please do that for the next three days. I almost, I almost, I almost. Then you will be ready to explode in some way. So all those things which really matter, either you do it or you don't do it. Spiritual process, you almost, you keep on almosting. So, how did I become a full-fledged human being? You have not become a full-fledged human being. I'm not trying to insult you, I'm just reminding you, you have not become a full-fledged human being. A full-fledged human being is too immense to be described. He's not a humbug, a made-up thing. A full-fledged human being is a phenomenon and that will not happen slowly. Yes, you have to cultivate it every day for it to explore one day, but it doesn't happen slowly. Slowly you can create the situation. Slowly you can create the situation. But explosion is one time and when it happens nobody can miss it. Neither you can miss it nor anybody around you can miss it because it's there to see. So, how does this little piece of life 
these two cells that met in somebody's womb became a meatball to start with, became a life process and now a human being, human being, yes, not a full-fledged human being, no. This has to become a full-fledged human being means the same things that nurture you are the same things which bind you. The same things which look like the source of your life are also the limitations upon your life. That is why people are so confused as to what to remove and what to keep. All the things that you think or the goodies or the baddies too, that's a problem. If it was very simple, goodies were different, baddies were different, very easy to dump the baddies. The goodies are baddies, baddies are goodies, that is the problem. So, you have to dump the goodies and the baddies or you have to embrace the goodies and the baddies. Embracing the goodies and the baddies is very difficult. Your life would become very multi-dimensional if you could, but you cannot do that. You may pretend to do, do that. People's idea of embracing everything is, they try to paint everything as good and they call themselves saints. There is nothing saintly about it. It's quite silly, not being able to see what is what in the world is not saintliness, it's just being silly. But uh, it passes off as saintliness. I see goodness in everything. It's not saintly, it is silly. <laughs> different things are different ways. If you don't know how to deal with it, you're just being silly, not being saintly. But unfortunately, you pass us off as saintliness. Being able to see everything just the way it is and still being able to accept it absolutely the way it is, takes a lot. So it's better to keep a little distance from everything. Keep small distance, you don't have to run away. Just a little distance from everything. You deal with everything but with a little distance. This is a easier way to handle. I'm not saying it is a better way, it is a good way. I'm just saying it's easier way. If you like to do it the more exciting and more difficult way, you're welcome. Only if you have the strength not to break up on the way, you attempt that. Otherwise, it's better to keep a little distance. You look at on everything, it doesn't matter for me whether it's good or bad. From everything I keep a little distance, from everything. Now what is this Sadhguru? Just in the beginning you were talking about love, now you're talking about distance. Only because there is distance you can love, please know that. If you create anything which is receptive, life will naturally come to it. It doesn't matter who you are, generally a womb is a natural space which has been created with that possibility that if a little formation happens there, actually it's just a meatball at that time. It's a very wrong way to… obscene way of referring to you when you are a fetus in your mother's womb, an obscene way of saying it. I am saying it this way because I want you to understand it's just a meatball. Even now you are just a meatball. Except for the life process that is throbbing within you, you are just a meatball, aren't you? What is this Sadhguru? All these insults, meatball, water body, what else are you going to call us? If the life doesn't throb within you, you are just a meatball. If a tiger walks in right now, he goes for you, he sees you as a meatball, I want you to know. 
Yes or no? He doesn't see you as a possible thief or enlightenment. He doesn't see you as some great something. He sees you as a meatball and he'll treat you as a meatball and he will make you into a meatball. Yes or no? If you don't like it, if you want to experiment, walk into the forest and see. An elephant may treat you as a football <laughs> but a tiger will treat you as a meatball. Football you are not. Some of you are working towards it <laughs> but you are not a football. That's a wrong perception of the elephant. But tiger's perception is right, you are a meatball, isn't it? So before life entered, you were definitely a meatball. But suddenly, suddenly, the moment this life entered, suddenly this just meatball becomes a live process and a tremendous possibility. A little meatball, what a possibility it's become. That meat meatball also became a Buddha, that meatball also became a Krishna, that meatball became so many wonderful things on this planet. So I want you to understand that today what you are is not the point. If you allow it to function, this process of life, if you allow it to burst open, then the possibilities are immense. Nature has delivered you here to this level of intelligence, to this level of capability, to this level of consciousness, free. Total free ride, isn't it? From being an amoeba, a single cell, micro creature to what you are today, absolute free ride, isn't it so? Total free ride, without even you asking for it. Here, just here, you are expected to do your own thing and don't treat it as a burden, it is a privilege that now nature has decided, the creator has decided that you are worthy of being given a choice as to how you live. This is the greatest privilege that the creator himself has decided that you are worthy of being given the choice to be whichever way you want to be. Please prove your worthiness, don't disappoint him. Lot of people in the world are depressed simply because of the Creator's work, isn't it so? They're questioning his judgment also. That which is the very basis of who you are, that which brought you from being a single-celled micro creature to who you are right now without unasked, it brought you till here. You're questioning the judgment of that also. Why is creation like this? Why is it like this? It should have been some other way. This is not intelligence. Don't ever convince yourself to think this is intelligence. This is a height of ignorance. The privilege that has been handed over to you, that now your life is your own. Everything is by choice. This moment how you are is your choice. Please enjoy the privilege. Please exercise the privilege. And only then you can say, I am a full-fledged human being. May this happen to you. Wow! When I throw hearts or wows or likes across my screen, I'm not trying to get attention. I am truly feeling what something is happening. Is happening. Sadhguru, Muji, Jesus, whoever. I express myself in becoming that full-fledged human being. I just grabbed a couple of videos under the guise of human, of Muji, 
and Sadhguru, and the first was no effort. They talked about no effort. And I did mention that your enlightenment is not something you see as down the timeline, though it may require time, as Sadhguru said, when you light a firework, it immediately goes bang. You may have a dud that goes and when a guru or a teacher sticks the fire or the ember in you deep enough, you too will go bang and it has nothing to do with time. I think we're starting to understand the level of this platform. At least I am. And my attempt, no, future success, future, not future, right now success of letting go and letting the divine light, the God fire, begin to flow through this presentation platform forevermore. Yanava. At first, we are a meatball. Go into the jungle and see what a tiger thinks of your ass. But when we become impregnated with life, this incarnation, we are so privileged because now we have the conscious choice to do what we want not only individually, but collectively, when we all get on the same page, my God, this is so delicious. We become the embodiment of the divine principle and we begin to anchor heaven on earth. This is not fluff and woo-woo. This is getting down to business. I am, I am, are you, you. <laughs> Lavender Soul, be right back. Going to go into Yanava mode. I'm excited about what happens to me when I go into Vessel mode. The deliciousness that we all feel in life, fortunate am, am I, speaking for myself, gets compounded. It gets, times itself, it folds it within itself. And it's kind of like a kid in a candy store. It's kind of like having an experience with God, meaning that comfort, that solace, that grace. Lavender soul, just to know you're there. I'll be right back.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Everyone, I really enjoyed this presentation of my, let's be real, let's be human, attempts and letting go further. And I'm going to continue to do this. This is my vow to myself, vow to you, vow it with me. Life can be scary. That requires effort to be afraid. What happens when we let go and we don't effort and we're no longer afraid? Then grace will melt itself all over us. My brother Elwood asked a question. I said I would address it, but I think Yanava wants to speak it. Tonight's presentation has been, still is, about human. Instructions manual. N is emphasized. Instructions. We're looking for structure. We will achieve structure when we go inward. Manual. That which is of the earth. That includes the whim man. The woe man. Woe man. Most men say woe man. Check that out. Let's be real. Thank you very much for joining me. Elwood asked a question. I think he said, what is my karma, my action? What is your karma, young one, eternal one, L Wood? Did you know that L E L is another name for God? Wood can be seen as that which is manifested, solid, that which gives structure to as you erect your house, L Wood. Incarnation of the Divine Spirit. And you ask the question, what is my karma? Hmm. More like what is your Dharma? It's your purpose. Are you doing it on purpose? Yes, you all have karma, not only Elwood. So what is karma? My action as Elwood so poetically stated. It's just action. There's no right, wrong, good, bad, in, out, up, down. You are all living and submersed in a world of karma. Hence, Mother Earth, the manifestation, that which gives birth to everything in creation. But karma, for you, Elwood, so to speak, you may trip and fall and break your toe. Not supporting you in that, but it's analogous. You may stub your, your finger on this or that. You may bump your knee. You may be in this. You may get an illness, this, that, or the other. Yes, that is karma. But there is no impending doom karma on any of you. Understand? That's the plan. As Sadhguru, earthly saint, connected with soul, Yanava, connected with you, you don't ignite in time. You ignite now. Are you igniting, at least, your firework, as Lincoln said, or do you have that bang about you? That's all that's required, is the bang. The shebang in you. What is being human? You're playing, dear ones, in a sandbox, in a cosmic sandbox, wearing clothing. Listen, listen to me very carefully. Playing in a sandbox, guys, as a human being, that's not what you are. You are the cosmic star. Do you not understand that? Until you do, you will continue to repeat that karma that Elwood so asked about. Hmm. Can I be done as soon as this presentation ends? That is completely and entirely up to you. Because in truth, you are already done. There's nothing else except for you to live joyfully. Are you doing that? Yes, but there is no but. It requires actually a but flip. Flip your ass over yourself to get over yourself so you can become and express your true self. 
as the vessel is so adamantly doing presentation after presentation after presentation. Now it's time for you to present yourself on the great stage of earth and to claim and be that rock star that you are. To become a full-fledged human being. There are no more excuses. There is no more time. Time is no longer existent. What is it? Ask yourself simply that I am resistant as the vessel is about. Without a doubt, stand up, declare, and shout your glorious life to the world. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight. I have a couple of people I need to inbox, attend to, for conversations about services. I appreciate you. I love you. Beyond measure. Are you serious, Keith? Try me. <laughs> I will see you soon. There is a donate link in this forum. Exercise your divine right to support something that helps you to become righted within yourself. You can just say, Keith, I love you. That's plenty. I, in turn, do the same. Yana here. Again, I love you beyond measure. It is my pleasure to offer you the treasure that's been given to me. And in a symphony, a concophony of harmony, we will forever play in the divine light of Yanava. I love you.